Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Out Workshop. You know, it's been an exciting, crazy week in my shop. I've completely torn apart my whole entire central vacuum system and I've got ductwork laying everywhere right now because I'm rerouting and redesigning the whole system. Now, you know, in the last video, I went ahead and built new blast gates and they are much, much more efficient and I love them far better than the old gates that I had. Now this video, I wanted to be able to just show you the completed system, but there were just too much and the video was going to be too long. So I'm splitting this video into two parts. And today I want to concentrate on the electrical side. I'm adding in a new circuit into my system and it's going to be a 20 amp service that's dedicated strictly to the central vacuum. In addition to that, I want to show you how to wire in a relay switch and how to put in the micro switches that will control the blast gates that will turn my central vacuum on and off from anywhere in the shop. So let's go ahead and get started today. Now if you're new to my channel, please go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it because I've got a lot of exciting videos that's coming in the very near future and you're not going to want to miss out on any of them. For the application of the day to be able to connect these micro switches into my blast gate system for my central vacuum, I'm using this relay switch. And I just picked this up off of uh, Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below to be able to um, give you the link to be able to purchase this. But uh, this is just the SSR-40DA. It is a solid state module. It has my 110 outlets up here and it actually goes from 24 volts all the way up to 380 volts and that's AC. Then at the bottom, this is the uh, low voltage side and it goes from 3 volts to 32 volts. And that's where the micro switches are going to be connected. And on the top side, this is where the central vacuum will be attached. To, for the low voltage side for the power supply, I just found one of these Leader Electronics. Any of these will work. This is just an old one that I found in an old box uh, that's not being used anymore. And the output is what you're looking for. Now this is a 12 volt uh, output that is DC current. That's what you're looking for. The first one that I actually found was an AC to an AC and that would not work. So this is going to work just fine. Now what I'm doing on the plug for my little experiment, and I wanted to show you this to begin with. On the plug, now this is not connected. This is my power supply right now and nothing is connected. But on the gold side, that's where my hot lead or the black lead comes in. And on the other side, this is the common and that's the white. So I just went ahead and wired those two together. I really don't need to do anything else to that. Now on the other side, I do have this wired together at the moment. And I'm going to plug this in and show you that without a switch, because this is where the switch will be, the light works. Okay, now before I plug it in, I am going to protect and cover up these screws. So there's no risk of being able to get shocked. I went ahead and protected these screws since it would be not a good thing to touch. So that is protected now. This is where the switch will actually go into it. But what I wanted to do first is just take my light and be able to plug that into my outlet. And then while this is just sitting here without you know bothering this, I can go ahead and plug this in to my outlet. Okay, now you can see that that works just fine. So that's my test. The plug works, the outlet works. So now what I'm going to do is turn this off, unplug it, and then be able to connect this to my relay switch. 
So now I have my power supply unplugged and I'm going to disconnect this wire right here and I want to be able to connect these two wires over into this circuit. So my hot lead comes in here and I want to be able to put that onto this side. And that will just slip right in, tighten down. I'll put the other lead into the other side. So that's now taken care of. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in now. Okay. And I'm also going to take my adapter and I'm going to plug it in as well. Now on this side, this is the low voltage. And if I connect this, it will turn on the light. But what I want to be able to do is put a switch in here to be able to do that. Now what I have is the positive lead coming into the positive lead on this side. And it shows positive. And on this side is the negative or the common. So when I connect this, that turns the light on, that completes the circuit. What I want to be able to do is attach the micro switch into the circuit. Now one of the things, and I know you're not going to be able to see this in the camera, but on the micro switches you have three different uh, pins on here. One of them is common and it's usually separated from the other two. And then you have a normally open and a normally closed. And for my application, what I want to be able to do is have it where if that circuit is closed, I want it to be off. So when it opens the blast gate, that switch will turn on and it will allow the light or the machine to be able to turn on for the central vacuum. So what I'm going to do, and this is low voltage, so this is not going to hurt anything if you touch the wires. But I want the common wire to be on my white. And then, now I want to be able to have my power supply where it comes in on a normally closed, which is the NC. Now what will happen on that is when this switch closes, it will allow the machine to turn off. So what I'm going to do is just slip this all the way through. And I'm just going to bend that around for a moment. And then be able to hold this. So now you can see my light is on. If the blast gate closes, the light will go off. So if it opens, the machine will turn on. When it closes, it'll turn off. So that's going to save me a ton of walking around the shop to be able to open and close the blast gates. So this is a little demonstration that I wanted to show you on how the micro switches work in conjunction with the relay switches. Now I want to be able to do the actual wiring. And the other thing I want to be able to do is put a switch on this power supply for my low voltage because I do not want that little transformer running all the time. So we're going to add that into the circuit also. Now I'm running an additional 20 amp circuit into my breaker panel and this is a 20 amp rated uh, plug or outlet that I'm using. Now one of the things that I wanted to be able to do is have one side work for the uh, central vacuum and on the other plug, I want to be able to have it where I can plug in my power supply, but I don't want this on all the time. So what I need to be able to do, and I've talked about this in a previous video, where you can actually break this little a pin right here. I'm going to get that up into the camera where you can see that. And that will actually separate these two plugs. Now, I only want to do it on the power side, because on the other side, I want to just be able to have the one white or the common wire that will be able to come in to this side. And by breaking this, 
it will allow me to have power come into this side of the plug all the time. And on this side, it will allow me the opportunity to add a switch into the box to be able to control and turn this one off and on. That way I do not run power all the time through my little AC-DC adapter. And then the box that I've chosen to use is a deeper box than normal and it is for the remodel or the old work because it has these little tabs in it. So what I can do is cut the hole in the sheetrock, slip this box in, and then using the screwdriver and that will raise up this little tab on the top and on the bottom and then I can tighten this and it will secure the box into the wall. And then my power will come in to that and then what I'm going to do is position this relay right at the bottom of the box. And that will still allow enough room for these plugs and that switch to be able to fit into the box. So that's the plan. Let me show you how it's actually going to work. Now the first thing I'm doing is taking a drill and I'm drilling two holes into the back of the box. Now the purpose of that is to be able to attach the relay switch directly into the bottom of the box and then attach that with the two screws. Those holes are just pilot holes so that I can thread in the screws and hold that relay switch in place. And with the holes drilled, and now I can go ahead and just slip in the relay switch and screw it in place and it will be permanently mounted into the bottom of the box. Now that it was test fitted and I know everything's going to work, I want to be able to pull it out and go ahead and attach the wires. Now the wire that I originally used is this stranded wire and I actually later on changed this out to the 12 gauge solid wire because I could not find the rating of this uh, stranded wire. I think it was heavy enough, I believe it was 12 gauge, but because I couldn't verify it, I went ahead and changed it out later in the video. But for now, yes, you can see where I'm just attaching the stranded wire to my relay switch. So don't let that be a, of a concern, because that was swapped out. Uh, safety is always first when you're working around the electricity. And since I could not verify the size of this wire, then I went ahead and changed it. And of course that meant a little bit of double work later on in the video. But for now you can see where I just attached it uh, and then put the relay switch back into the, uh, to the box. Now it's time to go ahead and determine the location of this new um, outlet. And I measured the outlets that was to the left of this and made sure that it was going to be in line so all of them would be the same height. And then from there I took the level and yes I'm using a level as I have done in the past and made sure that this outlet was plumb and straight because I do not like to have a crooked outlet in the workshop. Once I had everything laid out and I just used the level to be able to draw my lines in so everything was perfectly plumb and level. I went ahead and used a pencil to be able to do that and made sure and verified my sizes so that the box would fit in there easily. With that done, it's just time to take a few holes off and cut the sheetrock and create my opening. Now one thing I want to point out too is I know that this wall is a 6 inch wall and I know that there is nothing else behind this. And I also know the location of where my studs are located. So I knew that I was not going to hit anything when I was cutting out this hole or for that matter when I was laying it out. I knew that there was nothing was going to be in the way. And I wanted to point that out because I've had that question in the past. Now because there's no power here, I can freely work with this wire and literally it did. I just shoved it up through this wall and Bill has stuck it out there. But remember, my concrete board was removed from down below. So now I'm ready to go ahead and attach my box 
and I'm going ahead and run the wires right up through the bottom of this box and bring that out. Now I ran this 12 gauge wire through the wall and I had to remove the concrete board that was at the bottom. And then I just simply drilled the holes into my studs and ran the wire and reattached the concrete board. And I'll just slip that right into the hole. Pull out what I need. I'm gonna tuck it down. And then I'm gonna screw this in and tighten it. And that makes where the box is nice and secure and it's not gonna go anywhere. And it's nice and plumb. Okay, I now have the white wire attached to the silver screw. And this goes into this little plate so it does not have to wrap around the screw. This ground does though. The ground is wrapped around this way so as you tighten the screw, it actually pulls the wire into the uh, screw. So that's the proper way to be able to do it. So now the ground is taken care of and my uh, common or the neutral wire. So now all I have to do is work on the black. Okay, on the hot side, the power comes in on this to the bottom part of the switch. And then the power will leave from here and it will go over to the input on my relay switch. Then the power comes out from this point over to here and that will make sure that that is controlled on that one. Then when you turn the switch on, the power will come out and over to the bottom plug. Now remember we cut this little tab, so these outlets now are independent of each other. Now then, the last thing I have to do is connect the ground wire on my switch and be able to join that together. But I thought that would be a little bit too confusing to try to show that with all the wires that's going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect my low voltage wiring at this time. Okay, I have everything finished wiring now. And the last thing that I want to show you is the low voltage. Now when I plug in my power adapter and bring my wire down, my positive will connect right here. And then my negative will connect right over to this one. And then from inside my box, I have my positive that goes into the first one. So my positive comes into the first one. So this is the positive from the transformer. This is the positive to from the um, relay. The negative will attach into here. Now the next thing that I did is I connected all the negatives with the jumpers and I used a white wire. And I wanted to be able to do that so it was easy for you to see it. And then on the positives, I connected the positives with the black wire. And what this allows me to do now is be able to connect, in this case, three different ones. But I can just touch that and you can see my light comes on. Same thing here and same thing here. So there you go. That is the way to be able to do the wiring. Now in the next video, I'm going to have everything up and running and show you the whole system. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.